Hey guys, thanks for choosing this video for watching. In the previous video, we had a glimpse on the first chapter of the ICO Annex 1. In this video, we are uh, going to talking about the second chapter. And we are not uh, going to read each word by word. Just we have, uh, we are going to mention the main points and emphasize on the, uh, just the important points, you know. In the second chapter, which is for the license uh, and rating for the pilots, we have general rules. The three general rules are the, the main importance are the pilots cannot act as a pilot in command or co-pilot like as a first officer without a pilot license. So, so this is the first one. The second one is the, the category of aircraft must be included in the license title or endorsed as a category rating. And the third one is applicant must meet age, knowledge, experience, flight instructions, skill. Applicant must meet age, knowledge, experience, flight instructions, skills, and medical fitness requirements before being issued a pilot license or rating. In the next part, which is for the uh, class and type rating, these parts. It mentions that the class rating includes single engine, land, single engine, C, multi engine, land, and multi engine, and C. And also for the type rating, which uh, are established for aircraft with a minimum crew, at least two pilots, helicopters, and pilot lifted certificate for single pilot operation. And any aircraft as de determined by the licensing authority. In the next part, which is talking about the circumstances for class and type rating. A contracting state cannot permit a license holder to act as a pilot in command or co-pilot without authorization. A type rating limiting privileges to act as co-pilot or pilot in command only during the cruise phase in, uh, is endorsed on the rating. Now we should know that pilot licensing and licensing requirements. Type rating requires the applicant to demonstrate necessary skill and knowledge for safe operation of the aircraft. Also, instrument rating requires the pilot license holder to act as a pilot in command or co-pilot of, of an aircraft under international flight rules IFR, without proper authorization from the contracting state. Also, the authorization to conduct instruction is required for the issue of a pilot license or rating. For crediting of flight time, a student pilot or the holder of a pilot license can be credited with, with all solo, dual instructions and piloting common flight time toward the, total, uh, toward the total flight time required for the initial issue of a pilot license or the issue of a higher grade of pilot license. Also we have limit, limitation of privileges of pilot. Uh, a contracting state cannot permit the holders thereof to act as a pilot of aircraft engaged to international com commercial air transport operation if uh, or in the case of operation if the license holders have attained their 60 first day or in the case of operations with more than one pilot their 65 first day so it mentions it's it says that the uh, ages cannot be more than 60 and 65 uh, for the pilots a student pilot requirements uh, they have two major requirements the first one is the student pilot must meet requirements prescribed by the contracting state consent and the second one is the student pilot cannot fly solo unless on the supervision of or with the authority of an authorized flight instructor. 
Also, we have uh, medical fitness, which uh, a student pilot cannot fly solo unless that a student pilot holds a current class, second class uh, medical assessment. Uh, private pilot license requirements, uh, which we call it PPL, uh, has uh, two major requirements. The first one is the applicant must be at least 17 years old, and the second one is the applicant must have demonstrated a level of knowledge appropriate to the privileges granted to the holder of a private pilot license and appropriate to the category of aircraft intended to be included in the license. So we talked about age, knowledge, and uh, also we they should know uh, about meteorology and navigation, application of elementary aeronautical meteorology, meteorology, and procedures for obtaining meteorological information. Uh, also, practical aspects of air navigation and dead reckoning te techniques. Use of aeronautical charts are really important too. For the operational procedures, the application of TEM to operational performance, altimeter setting procedures, use of aeronautical documentation, precautionary and emergency procedures, safety procedures for helicopters and power lifts. Uh, the principle of flight, principle of flight, radio telephony, communication procedures, and phraseology for VFR operations. Also, the medical fitness, which they need to have the second class of medical assessment. Um, you should know that the privileges of the holder of the. Um, yes. The privileges of the holder of the license and conditions to be observed in exercising such privileges. The privileges of the holder of the license include acting as pilot in common, captain, or co pilot of aircraft within the appropriate aircraft category engaged in non revenue flight. Uh, also, before exercising the privileges at night, the license holder must have received dual instruction in aircraft. Uh, a specific requirements for the aeroplane category rating. Uh, the experience must be 40 hours of flight time or 35 hours if completed during a course of approved training. The second one is flight instruction, 10 hours of solo flight time including 5 hours of solo cross-country flight time. Flight instruction, recognizing and managing threats and errors, and operational experience in areas to the level of performance required for the private pilot, the PPL. And um, helicopter category rating requirements is also mentioned uh, in these documents. In the experience part, it mentions that it is required applicants must have completed 40 hours of flight time as a helicopter pilot. Also, credit for such experience is limited to five hours. And also, you, know, you need to know that applicant must have completed 10 hours of solo flight time under an authorized flight instructor, including five hours of solo cross-country flight time. In the flight instruction requirements, uh, they mentioned that two major points. The first one is that applicant must have received 20 hours of dual instruction time in helicopters from an authorized flight instructor. Also. The instructor should ensure the applicant has operational experience in areas like threat management, pre-flight operation, aerodrome and traffic pattern operation, and uh, you can read the other uh, on the document. For the specific uh, 
requirement for the issue of the power clip category rating reads three main points. Applicants should have completed 40 hours of flight time as a pilot of power lift. The second one is applicant flight time as a flight as a pilot of aircraft in other categories should be considered. Also, applicant should have completed 10 hours of solo flight time under the supervision of an authorized flight instructor, including 5 hours of solo cross country flight time. In the flight instruction and airship category rating requirements, uh, there are some requirement, uh, recommendations in the first part for the flight instruction. It says that the applicant should have received at least 20 hours of dual instruction, uh, hours of dual instruction time in power lift from an authorized flight instructor. And uh, also, the second one is the instructor should ensure the applicant has operational experience in areas such as, such as recognizing and managing threats and errors, pre-flight operation, aerodrome and traffic, and so on. You can read the, uh, the remaining part in the document. A specific requirements for the airship category rating, uh, there is one point, one of the major points. And it says that um, the applicant should have completed at least 25 hours of flight time as a pilot of airship, including 3 hours of cross country. And uh, cross country flight training in an airship with a cross country flight totaling not less than 45 km or 25 nautical miles. 5 takeoff and 5 landing to a full stop at an aerodrome with each landing involving a flight in the traffic pattern at an aerodrome. So it seems that the touch and go is not uh, appropriate for such aim. Three hours of instru instrument time and five hours as pilot assuming the duties of the pilot in common under the supervision of the pilot in common. The next part is dedicated to the commercial pilot's license which is, we call it usually CPL. In this part, the applicant uh, should have uh, should not be less than 18 years old. The applicant should have demonstrated a level of knowledge appropriate to the privileges granted to the holder of commercial pilot license and appropriate to the category of aircraft intended to be included yet, uh, in the license. Um, we have some operational procedure and skills for commercial pilots. In the in this part, uh, you know the the CPL holder must application of TEM uh, to operational performance. Um, they should know use of aeronautical documentation such as AIP, NOTAM, aeronautical codes and abbreviations, altimeter setting procedures, and. Uh, Precautionary and emergency procedures, operational procedure for carriage of freight, safety briefing to passengers, principle of flight, POF, radio telephone, communication procedures, and phraseology for VFR operation. For the skills and medical uh, fitness, demonstrating ability to perform as a pilot in command of an aircraft is. Uh, Obligatory ability to recognize and manage threats and error, operation within aircraft limitation, complete all maneuvers with smoothness and accuracy, good judgment and airmanship, application of aeronautical knowledge, maintaining control of the aircraft to ensure success, outcome of procedures or maneuvers. For the privileges of holder of the license and conditions to be observed in excess, uh, exercising such privileges uh, subject to compliance with requirements or 
certain privileges are for the age 16 and 65. In the next part, it mentions, it mentions the specific requirements for the issue of aeroplane category rating. In the experience part, it mentioned that uh, completion of at least 200 hours of flight time or 150 hours if completed during a course of approved training. Uh, completion of at least 200 hours of flight time or 150 hours if completed during a course of approved training. Also, completion of at least 100 hours as pilot in common or 70 hours as pilot in common. 20 hours of cross-country flight time as pilot in common, 10 hours of instrument instruction time, and if the privileges of the license are to be exercised at night, 5 hours at night flight time is required. There is a point, if your uh, schools or if your country doesn't uh, include any of these like as the flight uh, at, time, at night or um, any other items is different from these documents and you are going to migrate to other countries it is obligate uh, it is uh, mandatory that you fulfill that flight time for example if you're if you do not have a night flight on your logbook you need to uh, once again fly at the night and fulfill your logbook and then you can convert your license in your second country this is really important point that you should to know. In the flight instruction requirement, there are some points. Uh, applicants must have dual instruction in aeroplanes appropriate to their class and or type of rating. In the second part, it mentioned many details that like as uh, the instructor should ensure the applicant has operational experience in areas such as recognizing and managing threats and er errors and um, like as the um, cross-country flight using uh, visual reference many many details that you can read uh, in here also the instrument experience as specified in these sections doesn't entitle the holder of commercial uh, pilots but for the helicopter category rating requires an applicant to have completed at least 150 hours 150 hours of flight time or 100 hours if completed during approved training um, as a pilot of helicopter so this part is as we spy to the helicopter in the second part it mentioned that uh, you need to be able to doing these details like as cross-country flight using visual reference basic flight maneuvers with the uh, hovering out of ground effects and so on for the flight instruction recommendation uh, for the CPL uh, so we skimmed these parts and we're going to a specific requirement for the uh, issue of airship category rating. There is two major points that applicant must have completed at least 200 hours of flight time as a pilot and also that this includes 50 hours as a pilot of airship, 30 hours in airship as pilot in common or a pilot in command under supervision, 40 hours of instrument time and 20 hours of flight training in airship in these uh, areas. The next part is dedicated to multi-crew pilot license appropriate to the aeroplane category. In this part we have uh, several uh, category. The general requirement for license issue it, it says that you must be at least 18 years old so you have to know some knowledge like as the applicant must have completed the airline transport pilot license requirement in an afro training course you have you need to know some skills like as uh, demonstrating skills for pilot flying and pilot not flying to the level required to co-pilot to turbine powered airplanes with a minimum crew of at least two pilots under VFR and IFR and the medical fitness must be in the first class and the, for the privileges of license holder the holder of multi-crew pilot license can exercise all the privileges of pilot 
license in the aeroplane degree, exercise the privileges of the instrument rating in a multi-crew operation. And also the license holder must demonstrate an ability. In the next part, uh, it's talking about the exercise, uh, which three main points is mentioned. Uh, the first one says that the applicant must have completed at least 240 hours as pilot flying and pilot not flying of actual and simulated flight in an approved training course. Flight experience in actual flight included includes at least the excess experience requirement and also the applicant must also gain the experience necessary to achieve their advanced uh, level of competency defined in Appendix 3. In the next part, we jump to the airline transport pilot license. Like as the other part, we have uh, flight instruction, which you must be at least 21 years old. Applicant must complete approved training, uh, uh, appro training and receive dual flight instruction in all competency units. And in the, in the knowledge part, it says that the applicant must demonstrate knowledge appropriate to the privileges granted to the holder of the airline, uh, an airline transport pilot license. Subjects include air law, aircraft general knowledge, aircraft systems, and so on. In the next part, we're talking about aircraft general knowledge. You know, the rules and regulations let me find it on the text yes aircraft general knowledge uh, we have almost four or five points here rules and regulations relevant to the holder of air, an airline transport pilot license is vital the general knowledge for airplanes helicopters and powered lift understanding of characteristic and limitation of aircraft system, flight control system, and aircraft engines use the application of takeoff, landing, and other performance data. Pre flight and en route operational flight planning and preparation of air traffic service flight plans for the human performance. In the human performance, we have some points, we keep it and we jump to the airline transport pilot license application in the airline transport pilot license application you have you need to know some skills like as nav navigation and operational procedures use of aeronautical charts radio navigation aids and area navigation systems use limitations and serviceability of avionics and instrument for aircraft control and navigation and use accuracy and reliability of navigation system used in departure and route approach and landing phase and also principles of characteristic of self contain an external reference navigation system in the next part operational procedures uh, it says that applicants must know uh, application of TEM to operational performance, uh, precautionary emergency procedures and safety practice, uh, practices and safety briefing to passengers. I just jumped from some of the points. Uh, principle of flights, radio telephony, skill. Uh, these points are mentioned. Uh, principle of flights, uh, some skills like as demonstrating ability to perform pre-flight procedures, normal flight procedures, abnormal uh, and emergency procedures, crew in capacitation and coordination and simulated, sim simulated engine failure, ability to recognize a many threats and errors and uh, blah blah. Next part, it's talking about the specific requirements for aeroplane category rating. The applicant must have completed at least 1,500 hours of flight time as a pilot of aeroplanes. The licensing authority 
uh, determines if experience as a pilot under instruction in the FSTD is acceptable. The applicant must have completed 500 hours as pilot in common under supervision or 250 hours. Are there as pilot in common or made up by 70 hours as pilot in common? The applicant must have completed 200 hours of cross country flight time, 75 hours of instrument time, and 100 hours of night flight time. For the flight instruction, also it says the applicant must have received at the dual flight instruction required some documents and uh, it's indicating some documents which you can see 2.4.32 and so on. Pilot licensing requirements for helicopters and uh, power lifts. It's at first talking about experience requirement which must be 1000 hours flight time, 100 hours with 25 uh, acquired in a flight procedure training or based instrument flight time and blah blah you can see all the details in here. And for flight instruction requirements uh, it has two points and it says that the applicant must have received a flight instruction required for the issue of commercial pilot license in the next part you're talking about a specific requirement for the issue of the power lift category rating which it uh, it is crucial to have at least 1500 hours of flight time as a pilot of power lift uh, and some instrument rating requirements as you saw we have a glimpse on the second chapter of the ICO Annex 1 just to share with you the main important structures and some important points about these uh, details and rules of, uh, and regulations which are in flight in the skies in the general. So if you need to read any part of this document you can download it from the ICO website and in this video we just um, wanted to have a glimpse and we didn't want to read each word by word. Have a good day and safe flight. Until the next video, goodbye.